Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Talkin' Movies, and if the opening animation wasn't too obvious, it's pretty simple to figure out what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about Solo, a Star Wars story. So, here we go. After escaping a life of criminal servitude on Corellia, Han Solo vows to come back and save his love, Kira. Three years later, Solo finds himself in the company of Tobias Beckett, the leader of a crew of thieves. This adventure begins to create the legend of the Han Solo that we know and love. Before I get into what worked and what didn't work for me, I gotta address this. Uh, first, Alden Ehrenreich is not Harrison Ford. You know, I don't know why, but I feel like that needs to be said. I feel like people are not seeing this because... They're not using Harrison Ford, or they feel like they're trying to replace Harrison Ford. See, I don't know why, but I'm afraid that some people may be dismissing this movie because someone else is playing Han Solo. Look, I get it. He is iconic. He is a beloved character. I love the character, too. And look, I didn't like the idea of this movie at first, but I was willing to give it a shot. Uh, first, I try to give all movies a shot no matter what they are, uh, because you never know when something that you don't think's a good idea becomes a good idea. Uh, I thought back to Ewan McGregor playing Obi-Wan, uh, and this is what really made me feel a little more confident about seeing this, or at least confident in giving it a shot. Uh, while not Sir Alec Guinness, he did a good job at doing the role of Obi-Wan Justice. And over three movies, in which he was probably the best part of, he not only made the role work, but he's played the role more than Guinness ever did. And now a lot of people are clamoring for McGregor to play Obi-Wan again in one of these Star Wars stories. Look, I'm not saying that Aaron Reich will be remembered as much as Harrison Ford as being Han Solo. Not by a long shot, because let's just face it, Harrison Ford is Han Solo. There's never going to be any dispute of that. But after seeing this movie, I thought he did a decent job in the role. Oh, and about that three movies comment, remember I mentioned that. We'll talk a bit about that more uh, later in this review. Now, after seeing Solo, I'll ask this. Was Solo a perfect movie? No. No, it wasn't. I had a few issues with it. Uh, some of those issues were this. Uh, I thought the character development was a little weak uh, and or didn't work for me. Uh, a weak moment, and this is without spoiling anything, I felt that maybe too many characters were introduced and the time that they were given on screen didn't give them enough time to be as effective as they needed to be plot-wise. Again, I won't say much because you know, it'll kind of ruin some things. Uh, one that didn't work for me uh, was the friendship between Lando and his first mate, L3, uh, the droid. Uh, while I liked both characters, don't get me wrong, both characters were a lot of fun. Uh, some of the stuff that the movie has between the two of them would carry over into the movies that we already have with Lando in it, basically Empire and Jedi. Uh, but having seen Empire and Jedi, we know that this stuff, or at least I know, having seen it, I know this stuff doesn't carry over. And so, I don't know, I, I think this is stuff that would have been mentioned later, uh, is all I'll really say about that. And it didn't work for me. So yeah, there's some stuff in this movie that didn't work. Uh, one thing I did like is how they handled the beginning of the movie. Um, do you remember how jarring Rogue One was? And look, I like Rogue One a lot. I had a lot of fun with that movie. Uh, K2 is, uh, still one of my, one of my favorites, uh, from that movie and from any Star Wars movie. Um, 
but going into that movie, they went from a long time ago to boom, here's the movie, right? Well, this movie does it way better. While there's no crawl, uh, after a long time ago, there is uh, some more setup text to fill you in where and when we are in the universe. Um, and it matches the text and the color of a long time ago. And I think that this worked way better uh, as setting up everything. And I think, honestly, this if they're going to do more of these Star Wars stories, which, of course, they are, I think this is how they should handle it from now on. Other than a crawl, which, of course, they said they're never going to do except for the main Star Wars movies, uh, other than the crawl, it just feels right. Uh, as for the characters... Uh, in this movie, I liked them for the most part. Again, I thought, uh, Alden Ehrenreich did a decent job as Han Solo. Uh, if you can go into this movie without, uh, the high expectations of him having to live up to Harrison Ford, you're better off. Uh, I think that him playing off of other characters was what, what really helps his performance work. Uh, especially when he's playing off Chewie or Lando, especially Chewie. I thought they were starting to build that buddy dynamic really well. Uh, I will say that I can't imagine how I would have felt about his performance had the Lord and Miller uh, directing had stayed. Uh, if Lord and Miller had stayed aboard as directors. Uh, the idea of an Ace Ventura-like performance still haunts me. Uh, but yeah, what what he did in this movie... You know, you're not going to get Harrison Ford. We're not going to get a de-aged Harrison Ford. We're not going to get, you know, a turn Harrison Ford young and he gets to perform in this. I mean, granted, if they could pull that off, fantastic. But I don't think CG is ever going to get that good. You never know. Uh, but Alden Ehrenreich does a good job as Han Solo. Again. He's not Harrison Ford, but then again, who is? Uh, as for other characters, Chewie is Chewie. You get what you want from him. Uh, even some moments that have been hinted at in other movies. Uh, when a certain one of those moments happened, I was pretty excited. Uh, for me, when this happened, it was uh, it was one of those it's about time moments. Um. So yeah, Chewie, you get what you expect. Uh, and again, him and uh, Alden Ehrenreich playing off of each other was a very strong part of this movie. I really liked Woody Harrelson as Tobias Beckett. Uh, his character uh, is kind of a gunslinger type. And he's also the de facto mentor to Han as he learns the game, so to speak. Uh, he's the one that teaches Solo some of the more harsher lessons of how the galaxy works. Uh, the, the dirty side, the dark side, so to speak. Uh, Amelia Clark is, as Kira is decent, uh, but she's not my favorite character in the movie. And it's not the performance per se. It's more that her character is probably the most predictable in the movie when it comes to her motivations. Paul Bettany as the uh, crime lord, uh, Dryden Voss, is kind of entertaining. Uh, but he also comes off a bit hammy. Uh, he plays the boss man that uh, Woody Harrelson's crew is working for to pull off uh, the, the crimes of the movie, we'll just say. Uh, my favorite character and performance that I can talk about anyway uh, is Donald Glover as Landau Calrissian. I think... That this is one of those performances that people will be comparing to Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. Where yes, we know he's not the real thing. He's not Billy D. Williams. But he does a darn good job at making you feel that he is. Um, we get to see that even back in the past, uh, Lando is still a player. And again, the scenes with him and Han are a lot of fun. Uh, when it comes to the action of this movie... Uh, definitely feels very Star Wars. Uh, there's really no way to explain it. The The action set pieces are really fun. Uh, a lot of blasters. Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, it, it's just, it's what you come to expect from a Star Wars movie. Um, there's a scene of war 
that's uh, really kind of dark and gritty. Uh, and I won't say it's as great as the war scene from Rogue One because it's not as long. And it's it's more just a setup piece. But um, I thought they did a really good job at kind of showing uh, the brutality of the Empire uh, that they were calling, you know, saving people. So I'll just leave it at that. It's near the beginning of the movie. Um, but then the action throughout the movie, uh, the train scene is really cool that you've seen in the trailer. You know, there's a lot of cool heist stuff going on. It, it's just, a, the action's fun. When it happens, it's really fun. And, and I, and I had a good time watching it. Uh, I enjoyed the plot of this movie and was happy that it didn't try to cover too much of Han's life. Uh, the beginning of the movie shows some of his time on Corellia and then it cuts to three years later. And really that's all the time period, uh, that they covered. And we'll talk more about that in a bit and why I thought it worked. Um, the plot shows that even though Han is, uh, rough around the edges and is more than willing to get in some less than honorable situations for personal gain, Deep down, he is one of the good guys. Uh, Things like how he met Chewie and Lando feel natural and work very well story-wise. I won't spoil which ones, but some of the legendary Han Solo things uh, that you've heard about happen, uh, that you've heard about happen in this movie. So it was cool to see some of those stories finally come to life. Um, Also, while things like the empire do play into the story. Uh, this movie is more about the criminal underground, the dirty side of the galaxy. So that was kind of a nice change of pace for a star Wars movie where it wasn't always, it's the good and the bad. It's kind of, it's the bad and the worse, uh, in this movie. Um, and like I said, there's, there's bits and pieces of both sides, but we're more stuck in the, the middle with the gray area. And I kind of like that. Uh, earlier I mentioned how, uh, Ian McGregor, um, used three movies that he was in to develop the character of Obi-Wan, even though all we knew of Obi-Wan before was, uh, from Sir Alec Guinness's performance. Well, let me just say this, get used to seeing all Naren Rikus Han Solo. Uh, there's a few reasons why I say this first, He let it slip that he was signed on for three movies. Uh, I don't think he was supposed to mention that before Solo came out, but hey, he did, and there you go. Uh, Second, this movie definitely has sequel bait. Um, The entire movie, uh, it keeps getting mentioned that Dryden Voss, the man that we think runs the criminal organization in the movie, even has to answer to someone. It's all over the movie. Uh, it keeps getting mentioned that even he has a boss, even he has a boss. So that, that sequel baits you right there throughout the whole movie. Um, I won't say much more about this part because the reveal of the real boss was something that I've waited to see for a long time. Uh, I was so happy that, uh, this happened and I will say this, there is a connection to clone wars and rebels, the cartoons. Uh, cause yes, even though some don't believe it, they are canon. The Clone Wars is canon, not the, uh, not the shorts that got put together, but the CG animated Clone Wars and the Rebels cartoons on Disney XD are canon. The things that happen in those, uh, shows, uh, pertain to the movies. And so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to at least brush up. On those, if you haven't seen them, at least read up on them uh, before you see Solo because it'll kind of explain a few things. Uh, Lastly, and this is something that I was really happy about and thought benefited the movie, they didn't try to cram way too much of the legend of Han Solo in this. Uh, This is only a short period of Han Solo's life. Like I said, it starts on Corellia, jumps three years, and they tell a story. There's more to come. There's still more stories to tell. Uh, Characters to introduce and more of a legend to build. Uh, One of my biggest fears for this movie was that they were going to try to cram way too much stuff in. And they didn't do that. They only took a short period. And when Alden Ehrenreich came out and said, 
you know, he was signed up for three movies. I'm like, oh, good. They must be spreading out the story. I hope he's good. Well, having seen this, I thought he did a decent job. I would like to see him in more. I'd like to see Donald Glover in more. You know, there's other characters I'd like to see. And one definite character I'm happy to see uh, that, I again, I won't talk about. So I want to see more of this. There's more stories to tell. There's more characters to bring back. There's more characters to introduce. And the fact that they didn't cram way too much stuff into one movie made me very, very happy. Um, I would say this. Unless this movie tanks at the box office, this isn't the last we'll be seeing of the younger Han Solo. Again, this movie isn't perfect and Alden Ehrenreich isn't Harrison Ford, but that doesn't make Solo any less of a fun Star Wars movie. Despite some lack of character development, you'll still enjoy the characters in the movie, especially the ones that you know. Uh, while the movie does play a bit safe at times, um, you know, it definitely doesn't get too risky uh, when it comes to its storytelling or anything, but that's okay. I still had a really good time with this movie and am happy that there's probably going to be at least one more, I would say probably two, considering... Again, the Aaron Reich said uh, he signed up for three. Well, guys, I recommend this movie. Uh, again, don't go into it with high expectations of Aaron Reich's performance being as amazing as Harrison Ford as Han Solo. Just don't do it, and you will have a better time at this movie. I enjoyed this movie. I'm going to be seeing it again this weekend. Uh, I just I had a good time watching it. Uh, I like seeing the legend build and the fact that there's more stories to tell. Uh, I like that they didn't put too much into this, uh, to where they tried to tell the entire story. I was afraid that this movie was going to end up with, uh, Han Solo, uh, sitting at the table at the cantina waiting for, you know, as, as Obi-Wan walked up and you know what I mean? I, that's, that was my fear and that it doesn't go that far into Han Solo's life. So there's going to be more movies, there's going to be more stories to tell, and I enjoyed this movie a lot. I think I know what the next movie is going to be called, but I won't say it because that will spoil plots in this one. I do think that the subtitle of the next movie will probably be the title of one of the books about Han Solo. I'll just leave it at that, uh, or at least something similar to that. I kind of hope it is. Uh, but anyway, I enjoyed this movie a lot. I, I think you just need to let your expectations of his performance not, you know, ruin this for you. Don't let that make it to where you don't go see this movie. At least go check it out if you are a Star Wars fan. Uh, that's going to be it for Talking Movies. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you like what you've heard here, please uh, like, comment if you want to, and subscribe to The Real Gino YouTube channel. As always, this is The Real Gino, Gino Reynolds. I'll talk to you later. Bye.